I'm back. Good afternoon, everyone. It's Friday and it's been a while, but it's time for a shop update. Now, my apologies that I have missed, I think, two weeks of doing these videos and some things have changed. Some things have changed, okay? We've been super busy. It's been ridiculously hot, um, which explains the trimming here. Um, if anybody ever tells you who has one of those big long beards, if you're like, it's 110 degrees outside and you look at me and say, are you hot with that big beard? They, they are. Just know that they are. Even if they're like, nah, they are. Anyway, welcome back. It's time for shop updates. So get yourself a nice, comfy, cozy spot. If you're in this 110 degree weather, well, get inside where it's nice and cool. Get yourself a cool beverage, okay? If you're not in the 110 degree weather, hopefully you're someplace comfy, okay? Get yourself to someplace comfy. Get yourself a nice beverage. Get yourself a good snack. Let's start talking about some of these cars. It's been two weeks since I've given you guys an update. So, what's happened? Oh, so much has happened. So much has happened. We've got things like, you can't see it, but outside there's a giant Prevost or Prevo bus out there that we've had to do work on. What? Huh? We don't do buses. He was a solid favorite for a solid customer of ours. So we had to knock it out and do it for him. It's been there a while. It's actually been there a while. Um, God, so much. We've got updates on the Defender 90. We've got updates on this Jaguar. We've got updates on this Triumph TR8 over here. We've got updates on the Healy. We've got updates on the Lagonda project. We even have updates on the old shop truck. So let's get into it. Let's talk about... El Healy. I don't know if that's how you say that in Spanish. I don't think that is. Healy would be a proper noun. I don't know if it would be El. Wouldn't that be the Healy? I don't know. I don't know. Don't speak Spanish. Anyway, the old Healy 3000 here. Um, not, we haven't actually done anything to it, but we've, we've got a funny story about this. So um, we, we turned around, we were like, ah, oh, you know, we got to get some stuff together and get some parts ordered, get some stuff off the shelves and stuff like that. Let's move some progress along on this. We started doing that. And this, is, this was a while ago. And I said, well, I need a couple of parts before I start putting it together. And the parts that the car came with are really bad. And the new, or, the new versions of those parts are cheap enough that it doesn't make sense to not buy them and put them on the car. And those, those parts, I'll show you what they are. They're fender flashes. Okay, these go on the front fenders of the Healy. Now, we told the customer, we said, hey, we need these fender flashes. It'll help us move the progress along. And he said, okay, I'll get them on the way. We've been so busy with other stuff. Two months later, the guy hits us up and he says, hey, got any progress on the car for me? I said, well, you never ordered the fender flashes. We never got fender flashes. He said, oh, shit. <laughs> so he totally dropped the ball as well. And uh, he finally ordered up the fender flashes, got them here to us. So we can actually put uh, a lot of the front end back together. Um, we have a bunch of stuff. The radiator's got to go in. All that radiator ducting panel stuff that goes in there. The grill assembly. And then you can put the front fenders on. I, I do strongly suggest that you leave the front fenders off. If you can, leave the front fenders off when you're doing all the grill and the radiator and stuff like that. It just gives you a little bit more access to those things when you're doing these. So if you can leave the front fenders off, do so. If you can't, it's doable. You can put the grill on. You can do the radiator stuff with the front fenders in place. It's just a heck of a lot harder. Trust me, I know. <laughs> so we're going to get that squared away here, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Um, but I'm not saying anything because we have deadlines. We've got things we got to do. I got nothing for the Triumph TR3 or the MGA right now. Um, so let's talk, before we jump to the Defender 90 here, let's talk about two other cars that hopefully will be leaving here soon. Hopefully. And those are the Jag XJS and the Triumph TR8. Now, I've just noticed by looking at the camera, there's a lot of glare coming in, okay? And it kind of looks a little steamy in here. And uh, it is because it's like 100, it's, it's nice. It says it's 90 degrees in here. It feels like 100 and something in the sun. I'm sure of it, like 102 or something. It's just a little humid. It's a little humid in here. So I do apologize if camera quality is not top tier right now. All right. Anyway, let's get back to it. TR8, 
Jag XJS. We know this car, it's been in past videos. It sadly had a bit of an engine fire. Um, got written off by the insurance company. The owner doesn't want it, doesn't want to fix it. Uh, was gonna take parts off of this to put on another one that he was gonna buy. I don't think he ever found another one to buy. So, we've kind of been bugging him a little bit, like, hey, you're kind of, square footage is money. Maybe uh, figure out what you're doing here. So, I uh, told us, in fact, this week he told us uh, he's put it up for sale and uh, he's gonna sell it as it is. He had us pull a couple of parts out of it, but he's gonna sell it as it is. I don't know what the price is on it. Um, if you wanna know what the price is on it, Drop me, uh, drop me a comment or uh, send us an email. We'll be happy to let you know. Um, we're happy to find out and let you know. It, uh, it's, it's a nice XJS. It really is a nice car. It's so sad that it had a bit of an engine fire. Um, and it, I mean, you can get the parts. You can get the hoses that are burned up. Um, you can get the wiring that's burned up. There's, you can buy the whole front engine bay wiring harness for this. You can still get it. So it's like, yeah, you can get all this stuff, but is it worth getting and doing? Is it worth having a shop? Do it. If you're a guy, you're an at-home mechanic, it's, it's perfect project for you because it's really not that struggle, not big of a struggle, not really that hard, and you'll have a great car when you're done. You'll have a V12 car when you're done. V12 convertible. That's a lot of boxes checked, all right? Very few cars that can check all of those boxes and I genuinely think these cars are getting better and better. I think these cars are coming up. I think this is, uh, they're never going to be E-types. But man, these are going to be nice. These are going to be money one of these days. I say that. They'll probably drop in value. Um, further than they have somehow. TR8. Speaking of cars that have gone up in value. This is a Triumph TR8 1980. Your eyes are not deceiving you. This is actually a purple car. It is actually painted what is a color called Dark Tulip. That is not a factory Triumph color. It is, however, a factory British Leyland color. Uh, it was put on MGBs for a very short time period. Um, and I think you could get it on the MG Midget for a little bit, too. Um, and probably a few other very obscure, non-North American spec BL products. Um, she's... Originally, it was going to be done up. I was going to do that car. Uh, it was my dad's car. Um, he passed away some years ago. And um, I was going to do this car up. I was going to fix it up again. It wasn't like, it, I don't have like huge sentimental value attached to this car. There's other cars that I have that with that were my father's. Um, but I just thought, you know, I think the market's going to pick up on these. Let's, let's clean it up. Let's make it really nice. Let's do it up a little bit. It wasn't a bad car. It just needs some tender, loving care at it. And then we'll sell it on. Um, I, however, did not inherit this car. So I don't get the chance to do that. My sister inherited this car. Um, and she does not want to do that stuff. So this one has also gone up for sale. Um, and I, you know, if, if you want to know the price on it, just drop me, a, drop me a, a, a DM or put it in the comments below. And I'll let you know what my sister wants for this car. Really good car. Super, super rust free. Like no rust. There's a little bit of bubbling coming out in one of the doors. Um... But it's a really, really nice car, super low mileage. I want to say it's like, it's in the teens. Like it's, it's like, oh, let's just take a look. Let's just look right now. It's not in the teens. I lied, it's 30,000 miles. It's got 30,000 miles on the odometer. A little over that, 30,466, I think is what it is. Um, Rover V8 powered. It does have an Edelbrock intake manifold and four barrel carburetor. But I do have the original SU, uh, or I'm sorry, the original Stromberg setup if you want to go that route if you want to go if you want to go back to those uh, they're fine carburetors i just didn't like them on these so it's there it's a good car it's available this isn't a sales pitch i don't get anything out of when either one of these cars i don't get anything other than space that's all i get out of this okay anyway let's get back to more interesting stuff shall we let's do this okay Defender 90. That's it. She's here. All right. She's looking good. You're probably thinking, why are there no windows in this thing yet? My God, what's going on? We've been busy. Super busy. We did, however, get to the, uh, and I'll, I'll try and see if I can get, I'm being blinded by all kinds of stuff here. I'll try and see if I can get this in there. Um, we've got the uh, rear headliner assembly is done. Looking good in that Alakazam, Alcatara, Alcabara, whatever it's called. 
uh, headliner material, faux suede, okay? Uh, the front one is almost finished. Christian's uh, been working on that one. Um, he keeps getting pulled away by other projects, though. Um, and then the rear headliner piece that goes on the very back, the very back, right above, right above these windows, right above that window right there. That piece is done and ready to go. We've also put sound editing on the roof area, which is uh, commonly a missed spot. People tend to forget the roof is probably where most of your noise comes from. Um, that's all done. And um, we've got a couple of windows in it already. These, uh, the back kind of, uh, they're not alpine windows, they're the rear quarter light windows. That guy right there next to the rear door, those are both in. However, I was very unhappy with one of the seals, so we told the owner, we ordered a different seal, we got it on the way. Um, it just didn't look right. It didn't look the same as the other one. It didn't fit right. So we're going to change that. I'll point it out what I'm talking about here. Let's just walk over there and see it. I'm being blinded. Um, so it's got a gap. Like, I, what? Huh? It's, it's gross. I don't like it. Uh, and the owner didn't like it. Now, you can fix that. If you have that problem on yours and you don't want to order another one, you can fix that. There are... Um, silicone cements and glues that will go in there and, and fill that gap and it'll be fine. You can get kind of a, it'll kind of uh, delaminate, isn't really the really the right word, but it'll kind of separate. The silicone will separate from the rubber over time, uh, but it'll hold up for a while. So uh, the owner didn't want to go that route and he shouldn't have to. He's paying to have good wind window seals put in. Let's put, we ordered up another one, got it on the way with a new lock bead. If you looked there in that Roll back and look at it again. That lock bead uh, also uh, a little short of what it needed to be. So uh, we got that taken care of. Um, I'll be changing those out. Uh, the next ones that go in are going to be the alpine windows, which are the ones that go up here. Those are called alpine windows. Those go in next. And then we'll do the side windows over here. Um, and then all we'll have left in terms of windows will be the sunroof, which we're going to put in after the headliner stuff goes in, uh, the windshield, and the back window will be the last ones to do so she's getting there but my time my time because you gotta understand i'm focused on one car and we'll get to it it's here it's it's watching us all right i'm focused on one car most of the time here christian has to jump between all these cars to get them moved along while i focus on this one car super awesome of him but it can be straining to a person for sure okay so i'm working on this one he's been working on this one he's been working on that one he's been working on that one he's been working on that one he's been working on one outside you get the idea now in the meantime as well as doing all this stuff like the defender project here we have other stuff uh we had a buddy of ours call us up he said hey i need to come out and tune some car bridge we came out two days in a row and helped him tune up a bunch of cars at one go we also helped him with some suspension stuff while we were out there and some other junk. And he had wrong with a couple of British cars he had. And we also get other small jobs in, like differential builds. That's right, we do, we build differentials. This isn't a big deal. This one, however, came in. This is a, uh, a Triumph differential. For those of you who are unfamiliar, this was fitted to Triumph TR4A IRS cars. IRS stands for Independent Rear Suspension not internal revenue service. Um, TR4As, TR250s, and TR6s. This particular one is from a TR250. How we know that is because the gear numbers, the number of teeth on the crown wheel and the pinion make a certain ratio that was only offered in TR250s. We also know that this is a TR250 diff because the owner told us it came out of his TR250. Can't argue with facts. Must be a TR250. Anyway, um, this one came in for, I have like evil eyes because of the light reflecting. Um, this one came in for a pinion seal. Um, and upon further inspection by the owner, when he pulled out the old pinion seal, he noticed that the pinion bearing, the front pinion bearing, was actually kind of uh, destroyed. It's actually kind of broken. So he's going to have us do a front pinion bearing, maybe even all the bearings. We'll see how they all look. Um, some people would say to you, well, it's smart. You got it apart. Just do all the bearings. Certainly plausible, certainly doable. But in all honesty, like if you can save some time and not 
have to go through the anguish of assembling, disassembling, assembling, disassembling, assembling, disassembling a differential assembly so that you can get that pattern right and all you have to do is replace one bearing instead of all of them, it's the better way to go. Normally these bearings don't have very many miles on them, so they're really not that bad. They can go bad from the oil, which is acidic, eating away at the surfaces, rust or water being in there, getting things rusty, eating away at the surfaces. So that's why we're gonna inspect all the bearings. If the bearings are good and it's just that front pinion bearing, we may just change that front pinion bearing. Now, one of the other seals that we're gonna change, as you can see, this is the new front pinion seal. We're also gonna be changing the output seals. Independent rear suspension, this is an output flange seal. Um, there's an output flange that goes to the uh, drive axles. Here's the output flange here, okay? We'll be changing those seals out too. They are original to this. Um, the differential's cleaned up, it's nice. Like it's painted black. You can see this is the back plate. It is painted silver. It has polyurethane bushings on it. So the owner did a really good job cleaning up his chassis and doing all that stuff, but it's never been taken apart. So this differential has not, at least as far as I know, has not been cracked open in, in, in a long time. Um, so it's real, it's real dirty inside. So we'll get everything apart, we'll clean it all up, we'll check everything, we'll check our backlashes, we'll check our patterns, we'll check all that stuff, and we'll see how it all looks. Put it back together, get it back to them. So we get those jobs too. That's just a bench, we call that a bench job. That's called a bench job. Now, on to the big boy in the room. Big girl? I don't know. I don't know if the owner identifies this car or if this car identifies as a woman or man or what or they or whatever. I don't know, but it's one of them, okay? So, Laganda LG6. She's a beast. Um, we've gotten a few parts back in. Um, we've gotten a few updates on some parts that hopefully will be coming in soon. And we've gotten some, you can see the spaghetti mess. We've got some wiring work moving forward. We've got bundles upon bundles upon bundles of wiring because we're rewiring the whole car. My favorite job, I love wiring cars. These cars are actually really simple to wire, so it's not a big, big deal. Um, however, it does take a lot of wire. It's a big car, so we need a lot of wire. That, uh, that uh, brown paper there is actually masking paper for doing paint work. If you get in close on it, which we'll go over there and we'll do that real quick, part of rewiring a car means you can either follow the factory wiring diagram, good luck, there isn't one, or you can make your own. If you get in close on that, let's get in down there. What do we got? If you see it, I made a wiring diagram. Um, I actually made that wiring diagram about a year and a half ago. Um, that's why it kind of looks a little dirty and, and shabby looking. Um, but I made a wiring diagram. On that wiring diagram, we have things like relays. Now, in 1937, this car wouldn't have had relays. But this car has relays. <laughs> Part of making this car usable for daily use, remember the owner wants to drive the heck out of this car, he wants to use it all the time. Part of that and making it super dependable on long distance endurance rally racing here in the United States, part of that includes making things super, super dependable and safer. So we have relayed certain systems to make them function better. We have more modern blade type fuses in here, in a fuse box right here, because you can get them at any auto parts store, okay? A lot of this is about being able to be self-sufficient with the automobile on long distance and journeys, routes. It's still got a generator. It still has a Lucas regulator box. There's still a lot of stuff on here that is stuff you can't find in an auto parts store. And we're not gonna get rid of it. It doesn't have a high torque starter. There's nothing, you know, nothing like that. We just made the electrics a lot better. There are no switches on this dashboard that are carrying any loads through the switch. They're all being carried through a relay. That's a good thing. It puts less stress on the switches on the dashboard, less stress on the components that are being operated, and less stress on your wiring in all. It's perfect. Also makes diagnostics a little bit easier. So, a little bit of modernization with this old girl, but it's for a good cause. The owner wants to drive the heck out of this thing. We want to make sure that he can do that. That's our goal. Now, it's still slated to go to the Colorado Grand, but as you can see, clock is ticking. We still don't have an engine floating around in here. 
That's not what we want, right? Um, the engine, as far as I know, is being bored for new liners, new sleeves being put inside of it. Uh, since the, the block was, I think, too far for the pistons that we had ordered. We would ordered pistons that the Luganda Club had on the shelf, and they were a set of Ross Racing pistons, forged heavy-duty pistons, way overkill for a stock engine build, but they had them, okay? They had them in stock, they were available, and they think they were like 30 over. The block, however, was worn past 30. So they have to bore the block, fit a sleeve, it's not a problem. If anybody, if you're worried that your engine has sleeves in it, you don't understand engines. It's not actually a death sentence. It's not a bad thing. It actually can be a good thing. It saves a lot of very rare machinery when you do that. So we got new sleeves. Uh, I believe they were ordered. I believe they should be installed by now. I'll have an update on where the engine is from the machine shop next week. The Magnetos, which were sent out to Pat Mason of Mason Ignition Systems or Mason Magnetos, um, wonderful guy. Uh, if you have magnetos in your cars, highly recommend him. So Pat, uh, he's got him. He's it's the middle of race season, so it's kind of hard to get him on uh, getting this stuff knocked out for us. But he's he says he's really close and he's going to get him done. We do have back from porcelain coating um, the beautiful exhaust manifold. This is a new exhaust manifold from the Laganda Club. It's covered in black porcelain coating. A lot of these didn't get any coatings put on them. They were just left bare cast. I think on this kind of car that looks hideous, get them porcelain coated. It's not really a big deal. Get it coated. Um, this was done by Prairie Auto Porcelain Coatings. Um, not here in the state of Missouri. I want to say they're in Minnesota. Don't quote me on that. Just go Google them. You'll find them. It's not hard to find them. Um, good dude. Uh, we worked with up there. Uh, fair price on what he was doing. Uh, excellent work. Excellent work. Highly, highly recommend. So we got a few things we're waiting on for carburetors for it as well, but we're knocking things out. We're checking things off the list. We're getting things done. It's good, good stuff. Before I wrap up, there's one more thing. I did mention in a previous video that I bought a shop truck. It's still out there. You can't see it because it's blinding light. It will burn your face, um, but it's out there. I've been doing video work for that. Uh, there's going to be a whole video build series for that thing when I get it all finished to a certain level. Maybe not done done, but to a certain level finished. Um, and then we'll decide from there whether or not we're going to keep that shop truck or sell that shop truck and get something even better. Um, but uh, I have the cylinder heads done for that. I have the intake manifold done for that. I've got the throttle body ready to be rebuilt. I've got a bunch of stuff. Uh, honestly, Chevy V8 parts are a nickel <laughs> and you get everything to do the engine it's ridiculous how cheap chevy v8 parts are it's absolute insanity i used to think some of the cars i worked on had cheap inexpensive parts but chevy takes it takes a cake everything was i think i bought an entire ignition key uh switch all of it i think it was i think it was ten dollars for all of it it's like what huh if I needed to buy a key fob for a Volvo, it would be $40. Like, what are you talking about? This is insane. So I'll have a video series out for that when it is to a stopping point for me, to a plateauing point. Okay. So stay tuned. Get yourself liked, subscribed, like the videos, subscribe to the channel and get that bell notification icon clicked and dinged and all that other stuff so you can be informed when I put out another one of these videos sporadically every two weeks or consistently every week. Ooh, we'll find out. Anyway, that's all I have. I hope you have a lovely weekend. I hope you have a lovely week. I'll see you all next week. Maybe. <laughs> Bye.